Our speaker tonight, Eldred Brown, joined Toastmasters 12 years ago. After a six-week search that led him to visit three different Monday night clubs twice each. Through his Toastmaster journey, Eldred served in most of the club officer roles, including two terms as president of different clubs. Eldred has also served District 7 for many years as an area governor, division governor director, club growth director, and program quality director. Eldred has seen many clubs succeed and many clubs fail and has learned a lot about those factors that lead to a successful club. He has seen how a Moments of Truth module can help a club identify its strength and opportunities for growth. Tonight, Eldred will introduce to you the Moments of Truth, why it's important, what it is, and how it can help your club plan for a successful year. Please help me welcome your district director, distinguished Toastmaster, Eldred Brown, for tonight's Learning Lab webinar on the Moments of Truth. Thank you, Lori, for inviting me to speak tonight for our August Learning Lab webinar. And congratulations to all of you in attendance tonight for taking time to invest in your club's success by learning more about the moments of truth and how it can benefit your club. I do like this webinar to be interactive, so I will either call on individuals to offer their perspectives at moments or feel free to chime in when I call on audience participation. There will be a Q&A session after I have done presenting my material and that Q&A session will not be recorded. But if you have any questions, please save them for Q&A at the end. Our objectives tonight, at the end of tonight's webinar, you will understand why the Moments of Truth module is important. And you will have a basic understanding of what the Moments of Truth module is and how it can be used to identify your club's strengths, opportunities for growth, and how it can help you plan your success for the year. Why is the Moments of Truth important? It's a good tool for club self-evaluation. Through the moments of truth, you can identify what your club is doing well so that you can continue doing that. What your club hasn't done yet, but it looks like a good idea that we can start implementing that in our club and what we can start doing. And you can identify those things that your club is doing that are actually hurting your service to your members and you can stop doing those things. So think of it as a self-evaluation tool. What is a moment of truth? This also figures into why moments of truth is important. A moment of truth, let me ask you, I'll pick on Gwendolyn for starters. Dr. Gwen, what do you think is a moment of truth? Without reading what's on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to read that. For me, thank you, Eldred, for asking the question. The moment of truth for me is when you can get real as a group begin to talk about what is well among your leadership, what the club lacks, and how to go about solving for X, solving for those issues that are there, and how to eliminate them to make your club a positive, 
welcoming club to engage in. Exactly. Thank you, Dr. Gwen. As Toastmasters defines it, a moment of truth is any moment in time where a person, be that a longtime member, a new member, or a guest, comes in contact with any aspect of the Toastmasters experience. And that's an, an opportunity for your club to give that person a good or bad impression of the service that you provide to your members. And it can be important for a guest knowing whether they want to join your club or not. The Toastmasters Moments of Truth module is it a module from the club success series or successful club series that helps your club evaluate itself on six key points, which I will go into detail a little bit more later. First impressions, membership orientation, fellowship variety and communication, program planning and meeting organization, membership strength, and achievement recognition. First impressions. I'd like Charlie to identify from your perspective, what first impressions and why are they important for well, member experience? Thank you, Eldred. Based on my experience, I shopped around for clubs that were within a geographic bicycling distance from my home when I first joined 2015. And I went to several meetings. And the reason why I chose Civil Tongues is that it seemed to have its uh, proverbial act together better than the other club I'd visited in that it ran like clockwork. They made a point of uh, greeting me and explaining the roles, et cetera which I found better than the other club, which although not a bad experience, is more um, chaotic for want of a better word and a bit off-putting. So that was my reason for choosing one over the other. Hmm. Thank you, Charlie, for that description of your perspective on first impressions. What Toastmasters wants us to identify through the Moments of Truth module, are guests greeted warmly? Are they introduced to officers and members? Both my home clubs, we like to introduce guests to the club at the start of the meeting, allow the guests to share with us why they're, why they're visiting to the meeting. So that's greeting guests. Does your club provide a guest book and name tags? I suppose for Zoom meetings, that's kind of difficult. Uh, there are some ways to get around this. For an in-person meeting, is your meeting space arranged professionally? Is your club easy to find for an online club meeting? Do you make your Zoom link accessible in such a way that a guest could easily find it? Or Maybe you're concerned a little bit about security and you want to hide it behind a, a wall of some sort, but still, is the link easy to access and can a, a, a guest visit your club easily through the Zoom link? Do you invite guests to address the club? Do you make that sales pitch to encourage clubs to join your, to encourage guests to join your club? These are all important parts of first impressions and standards that Toastmasters would like us to evaluate in our moments of truth. Charlie, you raised your hand. Uh, yes, yeah, so how do you define a professionally arranged meeting room? I've seen the meeting arrangement, like horseshoe arrangement is a common arrangement for a professional Toastmasters meeting. That's the horseshoe you see in a lot of corporate meeting rooms, for instance. There are a few other ways that 
I've seen a, an official Toastmasters publication. I think it's for the sergeant at arms training that goes into different ways that you can arrange your meeting space, set up the chairs and tables. And I did see a recent diagram on how you can set your meeting space up for a hybrid club meeting. So those are some examples. And somebody mentioned in chat, Denise mentioned that they arranged the, the chairs by Brady Bunch squares. Not exactly sure what that looks like, but I suppose. <laughs> the next aspect of the Toastmasters experience, membership orientation, PJ. Would you share with us your perspective on what makes for successful membership orientation? Ah, yes. Well, obviously, I, I assume you're talking about now after they have joined the club. So you, yes. they filled out the app and paid their money. So now they're a member. Among other things, you would certainly want to make sure they know how to access your club meeting if it is online or how to access the building or wherever it is in person. You would want to explain to them the various roles in the meeting and encourage them to get signed up for their icebreaker as soon as possible. <clears throat> Meanwhile, you could have them take on some of the uh, supporting roles. Uh, we always talk about giving people the timer, which is one of the most difficult roles in a meeting, <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, trying to pay attention and run the stopwatch while you're timing people and listen at the same time is not a trivial thing to do. So uh, I, I don't necessarily encourage the uh, timer role as, as a newbie role, but we, send it, we, we tend to do that. Anyway, um, uh, making sure they understand what Toastmasters is and the program, uh, introduce them to pathways, uh, make sure they're signed up for pathways and they've chosen a path. And I, that ought to be enough for now. <laughs> And I wasn't looking at your list either. Well, you weren't looking at my list, but you did end up sharing a lot of what's on the list. Yeah, I, I probably hit a few of them. Yes. yes, you did. And I saw Denise in chat saying, mentor, I assume you're talking about assignment of a mentor. Do you, does your club have a mentorship program? And do you assign mentors to your new members? Do you induct new members formally? A club I visited just Sunday evening after PJ and I met at the Babylon Club did a formal induction of a couple of their newest members. And that was, I was quite impressed with that. Do you help your new members understand the education program and how they can achieve their goals? Do you assess the learning needs of your new members? Do you assign a new member their icebreaker slot within a, one month of them joining the club? Get that person up and speaking right away. Schedule the person to be a table topic speaker next week. These are examples of how you can get a person oriented on the on the education program and get them started participating in club meetings right away. Fellowship, variety, and communication. How about Michael Rosenberg? What what can you share with us on your perspective regarding fellowship, variety, and communication? Uh, that's a very good question. I think, number one, well, I would greet the guests warmly. I'm just reading off your screen. <laughs> <laughs> so fellowship, for my club at least, we're a corporate club, and we all work together, and it's a good way for us to take a little break during Thursday at lunch and kind of get together and get to know each other outside of work. A variety, my club is still kind of a newer club, so we haven't had too much variety, but we are working on 
creating some special events that will hopefully create some variety and interest for, for member engagement. And communication, well, I guess Toastmasters is all about communication and giving people an opportunity to speak, even if it's just as a guest to introduce themselves and how they heard about Toastmasters to prepared speeches, table topics, evaluations, and so forth. Thank you, Michael, and for your perspective on fellowship variety and communication, some of the standards that Toastmasters presents to us. Greeting guests warmly, I think we've seen that in a previous point. Are your meetings fun? Uh, and Denise, I do want to give you the opportunity. You raised your hand, so. I'd like to comment on interclub events. I have one club, it's a hybrid club in Florida that does a really good job at hybrid and they're on Cisco, they're not on Zoom. And they are planning a club event later in August. They were going to do a hybrid event, but then just today decided they made the announcement it's going to be on Zoom only. This is probably a challenge because everybody has a different schedule going in different directions and trying to organize an event for your club on a different day from your meeting is probably really hard to do. So if they pull it off, it's really good because it bonds the club members together. Uh, and that's not something you see a lot of outside of a district event. That's usually where you see everybody as a district at a district uh, event. And some clubs do what they call the post toasties. And they, they spend time after the meeting talking or some socialize before the meeting. I have been in visiting several clubs where the meeting ends abruptly at the as the hour is over and there is no post or pre toasty at all. Those clubs don't seem to be doing as well. No. So thank you for bringing that up. The importance of what I heard in that is the importance of social activities, both before and after club meetings to help people develop relationships with each other outside of Toastmasters and not just within club meetings. And Dave. One of the things we did was we ran a speakathon last year and we're gonna do it again this year, but we held it around Halloween and we called it a spookathon. And we had fun. We didn't have a lot of people, but we had fun with ones who were there. So that get, brings multiple clubs together. One yep. club hosts it and invites other clubs. Oh, yeah. So a, that's a great idea for bringing clubs together for inter-club events. And it makes meetings fun. We talked about regularly scheduled social events. How about participation in area district and international events? participating in the speech contests, helping run a speech contest, or even hosting a speech contest, which with our vote to run all our speech contests online, there's not going to be any opportunity this year for clubs to host area speech contests. But in person, that's always a fun thing to do. My club has hosted a number of area contests. Those are always fun. They bring people from other clubs to visit our club and we get to visit with members of other clubs. And international events, we have an opportunity later this month. The international convention will be completely online again this year. You'll have access to a lot of our events through free registration for an, an additional $25. You'll have access to all of our convention events. And especially the World Championship of Public Speaking, that's always fun. And you can log in from the comfort of your own home this year. Next, program planning and meeting organization. Let's call on, how about Noosh? Your perspective on what makes for good program planning? Uh, for me, a good program planning is uh, first we start with a well-prepared agenda. 
list out all the, the rows and then what is it? The okay, the all the assignment of the speaking roles and everything in place, and with all the evaluation as well in place. That's a well programming planning for the club. Thank you, Noosh. You, you touch on the the program and the agenda, getting that well organized and also publicized in advance. I know a couple of clubs that they like to, they use free toast toast and they like to schedule their um, agendas two months. You'll see the next two months of agendas and they encourage people to sign up two months in advance. Usually we end up, most people sign up within the week leading up to the meeting, but we try to encourage them further in advance than that. Do we prepare our members to carry out all their program assignments? An important one, our projects all completed from pathways. Do meetings begin and end on time? We value time and we don't like to waste people's time. So do we start and end on time? And as a member of one of my clubs likes to say, do we have a good time? Our table topics, creative, challenging, and fun. The feedback that we give in our evaluations, is that feedback constructive? Does it motivate people to continue to develop their speaking skills? And I see a couple of hands raised, so uh, Jim. Yeah, the one note I wanted to add is that it's important to have the program where people are completing educational projects because when someone comes to see Toastmasters, one of the main reasons they're coming is they want to improve their communication skills. Mm -hmm. If they see that people are completing projects that help them to improve their skills, then they see that they can get something out of Toastmasters in terms of developing and building their skills. If they come to a meeting and just see a few people giving speeches about any old thing and not doing any manual speeches or projects, they might think, well, this is a nice place just to come and chat, but it's not really an educational program. So that's one of the moments that you need to consider. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jim and Charlie. Yes, on a side note, um, how does a successful club series relate to pathways? That's not a, a path, is it? No, it, it's a separate module designed mostly to help clubs learn how to be more successful. I think we are still using the successful club series because that was always separate from the speech manuals. Okay, so it's not for credit, so to speak. Right. Okay, thank you. And I see we have a couple more hands raised for sake of keeping this uh, webinar on schedule. Would you mind if I asked you at the next, next point? Well, let's go ahead. Denise. Mine was on the other slide. Fun meetings, fun meetings, attract members, fun meetings, keep members, fun table topics, good evaluations, and people seeing those good evaluations. In fact, my main Florida club had a visitor I had invited from, oddly enough, Portland. And she came to the meeting, and she loved the meeting, and she said the thing that attracted her to the meeting was because you could make mistakes and not be criticized. I like the fact that she didn't have to worry about making a mistake. Nobody was going to jump on top of her for that, that we're going to laugh it off and make a joke out of it, and you're not going to be criticized for it. And that attracts people. Thank you, Denise. And I field one more from Dave, and then we'll move on to the next slide. 
every speech is a project. So if you're doing club success plan or even moments of truth, it's a project and I can fit it in anywhere you need it to. Cause I will, I will put that project in uh, and encourage you to do that. And, and we're doing an open house. We have two people doing projects for the open house. They're more than the usual speeches, you know, they're, they're, but there's question and answer series and a panel discussion. You can make it a, a project and pathways. Every yep. speech is a project. Mm -hmm. And thank you for that reminder, Dave. Next point that Toastmasters would like us to examine in ourselves and our clubs, membership strength. Does your club have 20 or more members? How is your club doing at retaining members? This, I think, touches a lot on the quality of the member experience. A high quality experience will keep members coming back and keep them paying dues. If your quality suffers, then you probably will lose more people every dues cycle. How does your club do at promoting itself outside? Maybe your club's parent company or in the community. Are your club programs varied and exciting? How do you do it recognizing members who sponsor new members? I know Toastmasters has a few ways of recognizing those who sponsor new members. We have our talk up Toastmasters, we have our Smedley incentive, we have a couple of the beat the clock. We also, I recently discovered Toastmasters also recognizes those worldwide who sponsor five new members in one year. And even more special recognition for those who sponsor 10 members in one year. <laughs> like Dave is bragging about himself. <laughs> Does your club have regular membership building programs? What are you doing to build membership? And I'd like to call on somebody to tell us why membership and having 20 members is important. How about Maury? Why is 20 members important? Thank you, Mr. District Director. Well, it's important for a, a couple of reasons. First of all, not every person in your cl 20 club, 20 person club will come at the same time. It seems like Somebody's got a doctor appointment or somebody has to go to work uh, earlier. So having 20 people at least gives you a wide variety of your club members to fill all the roles. And then you don't have to have club members doing two or three roles in a meeting. I think it's also good so you can brainstorm a lot of different ideas when it comes to talking within your membership. Mm -hmm. It just helps for a more vibrant club to have a good solid membership. I agree. And for all of the reasons that you listed, Lori, that having a good membership base will help you spread the load of your meeting roles so that you have enough roles for everyone to have one. And you don't have one person taking on more than one role on a meeting and getting burned out. So thank you for that reminder. I believe this is the sixth point on the moments of truth. How does your club ach recognize achievement? Do you submit awards immediately? And do remember that on Pathways, it's not enough to submit a, a level completion through base camp. There is the double submission that we need to remember that after submitting an award through base camp, you also have to submit the award to Club Central. Otherwise, and I'm, we got a lot of this last year where the club asked, well, we submitted the award through base camp. How come we aren't being recognized for that? Oh, you, 
needed to remember Club Central too. And submitting awards. How do you recognize members who have achieved awards? Just this past Sunday, we had somebody in our club had completed the level one. And we made it a point of, at the start of the meeting, saying, congratulations to this person for completing level one on, what was it, the effective coaching path? That is something that you want to do. It, it makes people feel good for achieving. Do you recognize leaders within your club? Maybe somebody in your club was recently elected program quality director. That's something really good to recognize that that, that person in your club has really achieved a major goal. And do you publicize club and member achievements? We had a question in chat from Terry. Can you discuss electronic badges? That, Lori, from your knowledge of pathways, what can you tell us about electronic badges? You can submit badges to people within your club or clubs that you've visited. It was kind of humorous because when we first started Pathways, two people in my group gave me badges and I didn't even know it. <laughs> Later on, <laughs> when I was looking through my program to uh, download some things, I said, this, they'd been sitting there for several months. I, I could have thanked them for that had I known that they had done it ahead of time. But it's nice to be able to do that. It's kind of like a pat on the back. And then the person that receiving that feels good too. Mm -hmm. So that, that is another way of recognizing achievement within your club. Through this webinar, we cover the six main points on which your club can evaluate itself on the Moments of Truth module. First impressions, membership orientation, fellowship variety and communication, program planning and meeting organization, membership strength, and achievement recognition. All of you who participated in tonight's webinar by sharing your perspectives, thank you for participating tonight. We are now summarizing what you just learned and we will transition pretty quickly into the end of this webinar. Why? So back to the why of the moments of truth. What you use, what you find in your moments of truth module as you run through it, you can use that, your findings on the situation analysis portion of your club success plan. If you take a look at the club success plan, you'll see that there are a number of spots where you can enter a situation analysis. And you can also enter an action plan for your club. Moments of Truth really helps with that situation analysis. And when you identify action items, things that you as a club want to do to change your service to your members, or continue doing what you're doing, identify those as action items. Assign those action items to responsible parties, whether it be an individual officer or the whole club, and identify that in your action plan on your club, club success plan. And uh, many of you are area directors. I see you all here tonight. If you're an area director, this is a great project for you to work on with a club as you make your club visit. Because the area director club visit report, I looked at the new report today, page one is all about the moments of truth. In fact, it, it, it encourages you to 
evaluate the club on your visit according to the moments of truth. So why not, instead of just relying on your own outsider's perspective, why not invite the, the club to join you in evaluating themselves according to the moments of truth? And that can give you a lot of insight on how the club views itself. And you can use that insight as well in filling out your area director club visit report. And if you're not an area director on the call tonight, your club officer, invite your area director to come visit your club and guide your club through moments of truth. That's a, a good way to develop a bond with your area director. You get to know your area director better and your area director gets to know your club better. So this is an, a good reason to invite your area director to visit your club. In closing tonight's webinar, remember that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So use moments of truth to identify where you are making a good impression and where you can improve the impression, the first impression that you give guests when they join your club. And if you improve your first impression, you'll increase your new member signups, and you'll in, improve your member retention. 